Well, good Thursday afternoon to you. I am Dylan Radigan as we continue our Mad as Hell series with our Get Money Out of Politics campaign. We want to show you how corrupt the green curtain that surrounds our political system may actually be. In fact, it would appear even ideas that lead to policy are purchased and sold. By the way, more than 55,000 of us have signed on to our Get Money Out campaign in just the first two days. We're going to tell you how you can get on board a little later in the show as we start to organize towards that 100,000 goal. But first, back to our ideas for sale installment of this coverage. In the 1940s and even the 1950s, even though most in the medical profession knew that smoking was dangerous to your health, you had a lot of ads like this, bought and paid for by cigarette companies looking to sell cigarettes. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Once again, the brand named most was Camel. Yes, according to this repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Flash forward to the 1970s. According to a new investigative report published in The Nation magazine by friend of the show Mark Ames and his co-writer Yasha Levine, Charles Koch of the famous and wealthy Koch brothers bought and paid for an anti-social security and Medicare idea stand that involved Nobel laureate Friedrich Hayek of Austria. According to the reporters, here's how it came down. Charles Koch wanted to use Hayek as an expert to give his think tank, think tank the Institute for Humane Studies, an intellectual drive or intellectual rationale to get rid of Social Security. But Hayek, according to Ames and Levine, was afraid of leaving the safety of the universal health care coverage he was enjoying in his native Austria by coming to America's rigged marketplace system. Hayek feared the cost of America's health care. So Koch, according to Ames and Levine, responded to Hayek saying, do not worry about your Social Security safety net. The U.S. has one and you'll be fine. Mark, Yasha, we welcome you. Uh, before we get too far into this, Mark, why should we care so much about something that happened so long ago? Because the ideas that were funded and seeded then are now considered respectable ways of framing the debate. You know, you have guys like um, Rick Perry calling Social Security a Ponzi scheme. Um, you know, everybody on both parties, actually, is, is really talking about uh, cutting right. these programs, Medicare and Social Security. And so, but these ideas, these, these politics, these rotten politics, they began as rotten ideas funded and fronted back in the 70s. And that's what these letters show, is that how did Charles Koch and Friedrich Hayek think in private about these programs that publicly they've been trying to destroy for decades? And privately, they knew they worked. Uh, Yasha... How does one go about the business of buying and seeding an idea? And why was somebody like Hayek uh, so relevant to being able to do that? Well, Hayek was, um, his invention probably was to promote the idea that um, any kind of socialized system or centralized uh, system of government or a program like medical program would inevitably lead to totalitarianism, to uh, Stalinism, to fascism. It would uh, d decrease lifespans. It would lead to mind control. But I get would, that. I his, understand and, the beliefs. But why is that so? Why was listen? I, I know a lot of people who think that they're not uh, getting paid off by the Koch brothers and they're not seen as influential to ideas. Why was this particular guy's ideas so influential? Well, well, because he, was, he, he had. His, his, uh, go oh, ahead, sorry. Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Well, I was going to say because uh, Hayek is considered the godfather of free market economics in the 20th century. He's a Nobel Prize winner. In fact, he won the Nobel Prize the year after Charles, and he had this back and forth. And Charles said to him, "You know, don't worry. You can come to America. You'll be fine because actually, you had secretly." Um, paid into Social Security while you were at the University of Chicago in the 1950s. So you qualify for Social Security and Medicare. So don't worry. Everything's OK. All you right. can leave Austria and come here. So let's now, look, and, and, hold, hold on. Hold on, Mark, because we have a, yeah. an excerpt of the letter. And I want to make sure I don't want to just have this float by as a graphic. It <laughs> says, since you have paid into the United States.
state social security program. This is from who to who? This is Koch to Hayek? Koch to Hayek. All right. So uh, Charles yes. Koch wrote to Hayek, don't worry, the implication is saying, don't worry, since you, Hayek, have paid into the U.S. Social Security program for a full 40 quarters, you are entitled to Social Security payments while living anywhere in the free world. Also, at any time you are in the United States, you are automatically entitled to hospital coverage. For further information, I'm enclosing a pamphlet on Social Security, and you're saying that this communication was being had between a Nobel laureate who was being paid by the Koch brothers to debase the very thing that he was being given. Is that... Do I understand that right? That's, exact, that, that's, that's exactly, exactly right. right. So, so he's being paid to come out and front, and because the Cato Institute, which was Charles Koch, sort of the Koch brothers kind of leading, uh, you know, think tank uh, that was founded in 74, 77, it depends who you believe. Uh, in any event, the Cato Institute is the leading outfit uh, that has been campaigning since the 70s to dismantle and destroy Social Security. And this is founded by Charles Koch. In fact, the guy in charge of Cato Institute's program arguing how we should dismantle Social Security was the head of General Pinochet's Social Security privatization program. That's who the Kochs have uh, uh, running their program. So I, I want to inject here on our side, we reached out to the Koch brothers to respond to uh, the revelation uh, of the purchasing of ideas that the very people advocating them uh, were fearful that they would be subjected to them, basically. They're saying uh, they were trying to avoid it. Uh, the, the Koch brothers have not as yet gotten back to us. I should point out we only brought this to their attention a few hours ago, and I think it's appropriate that we give them a little bit more time to consider what their response is. But it's important that the audience understands uh, our relationship with not only this reporting, uh, but with our uh, respect for every, everybody, obviously, involved uh, to have yep. an opportunity to comment. But go ahead, Mark. Mm. I'm sorry, I just wanted to say that these, these letters, it's not like, you know, there was a hacking situation or anything. These letters, Yasha um, discovered these letters while researching in the Hoover Institute. So these letters are part of the, the Hayek collection of letters. Um, and so they were available to the public. It's just that nobody had ever seen them or perhaps looked for them before. And Yasha discovered these letters. And, I mean, Yasha can tell, well, you know, Yasha's response, reacted. I mean, I remember Yeah, well, tell, tell us the yeah, story. Well, tell us this. <laughs> Well, yeah, so I yeah, was sure. uh, at the Hoover Institution archives, in, which are at, at Stanford, on the Stanford campus in, uh, in California. And, uh, and I, when I came across this letter, from, from what I understand, this letter from Charles Koch to Hayek, which uh, champions Social Security and uh, hard sells Hayek uh, uh, on Social Security, is the only letter that uh, I know of or, or that the index lists that is from Charles Koch personally to Hayek. So, I mean, think about this. The only letter that Charles Koch ever wrote to Hayek was to tell him to get on uh, the Social Security and Medicare bandwagon and, you know, and reminding him that, hey, you signed up for Social Security. You opted in, so don't worry about it. And, and, the, and, 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 and the hypocrisy and, is that this man is being paid to advocate the disassembly of what he's worried about losing. How prevalent, Mark, is the culture... Of, idea, of, the, of purchasing and seeding ideas in this sense, and how much has money in our political system, not in the campaign sense, but in the ideological sense, infected the entire debate framing? Well, first of all, I would say this is worse than hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is a kind of moral thing. This is actually a scam played out on the American people. <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting, in, in, when you launched this campaign, uh, getting, getting money out of politics... Um, you know, you did a, a, a hold sort on, of historical hold on, piece hold about... Hold on, Mark. Hold on. Yeah. It's, it's caveman. Get money out. We don't want to get money out of okay. politics. We don't want to get the money out. We're talking to the three-year-old lizard brain. Mm -hmm. Get the money out. <laughs> I, didn't, I can't even do okay. it. Go ahead. I'm teasing. <laughs> get the money out, baby. <laughs> now so, get, um, go ahead. Money. <laughs> yeah. So when you, when, you, uh, when you started this, you, know, you, you, you went back in history and sort of pinpointed where... The money corruption really exploded, which had to do with the Supreme Court decision in 1976 that suddenly made money as free speech and, and allowed all this money. And, well, it's interesting because right at the same time we have in the 70s this explosion of think tanks, which now dominate the ideas mm. industry, right? I mean, ideas used to come out of universities, and they used to go through a far more rigorous process. And, and actually, one of the Supreme Court justices who ruled on that decision, Lewis Powell, he wrote in, in the early 70s the famous Powell Memo in which he told corporations, he advised corporations, you need to stop funding universities that don't promote your corporate interests and you need to start funding 
only people, thinkers, and institutions that promote your interests. And so then Stunning. suddenly you have the rise of these parallel, you know, what are, what are think tanks? They didn't really exist or barely existed before the mid-70s. They're, they're sort of set up as a parallel structure to compete against the ideas coming out of universities, which they can't control as easily. Yeah, no, it's... Uh... You have to understand it and acknowledge it as disgusting as so much of this is if we're going to begin the process of resolving it. I thank both of you. Congratulations, Yasha, on uh, a keen eye, my man, a keen eye, uh, to say the least. Uh, if you're looking to thank learn, you very much. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you, Yasha. If you're looking to learn more about this particular piece of journalism, you can find it at The Nation. Uh, and we here at NBC await uh, further comments from the Koch brothers uh, from uh, the discussion of the letters presented in the nation and we just discussed here.